My last video was on horror games and I really wish I'd played Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice before making it. There's not a single jump scare in it, but it might be the most frightening of the lot. Developer Ninja Theory released Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice in 2017, labelled as an independent AAA game. A game with the look and feel of a AAA release, but the direction and budget of an indie title. Hellblade definitely contends with the big hitters from a design standpoint. It also wraps a dark, personable and vulnerable story around the protagonist Senua, providing character development to a level that actual big budget titles rarely produce. Some cracks show through the AAA exterior when it comes to gameplay, but where Senua's sacrifice is unique is in its storytelling. We're going to get pretty deep into what actually goes on in Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. The game is almost three years old, but I'll drop a spoiler warning in here, just so you know. The river of knives across which lies the halls of hell. The place they call Hellheim. Hellblade's setting is rooted in Norse mythology, my knowledge of which comes primarily from the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Turns out that Odin, Loki, Hela and Thor are a lot darker than Disney's sugar-coated representations. Wow, who would have thought that? Senua is of the Pict tribe, a group of Celtic warriors from Orkney in Northern Scotland. The Celts, like everyone else at the time, believed in witchcraft and dark magic. Senua's mother was believed to be a witch and was burned alive to exorcise the darkness within her. Senua was forced by her father to watch the whole thing so she could see what power the darkness had over a person. Unfortunately, Senua's father, who was a bit of a mad druid, believed the darkness that resided in Senua's mother also resided within her, and so she was sent into the wilds to purge her curse. While Senua is in exile, the Picts are raided by Northmen, or Vikings. When Senua returns, she finds that the Vikings have destroyed everything and everyone in their path, and they performed the gruesome blood eagle ritual on her loved one, Dillian, as a sacrifice to their Norse gods. You fought for love unspoiled, by your darkness within. You fought for your dreams. Now there's no way to win. In the head of his corpse lies the seat of his soul. So you must carry his vessel to bring him back home. Upon witnessing such horror, Senua recalls teachings from a shaman she met in the wilds, Druth, and the power of the Norse gods. She realizes then that if she takes Dillian's head, Yes, that's her boyfriend's skull she's carrying around with her. To Helheim, the Norse underworld and land of the dead, she can bargain with its ruler, Hela, and lay Dillian's soul to rest. Hellblade on the surface is a fantasy horror story, but it dives deeper. Senua develops severe psychosis as a result of her abusive upbringing and the traumatic events she has witnessed. <laughs> As Senua journeys to Helheim, the real battle she must face is the one inside her mind. Her gaze, averted from life. You ran from it but brought it nearer, led it to him. An endless suffering, worse than death. Ninja Theory developers worked with psychiatric professionals and researchers to portray the symptoms of psychosis as accurately as possible. With this in mind, playing through Hellblade is at times startling, unnerving and uncomfortable. It's also a very empathic experience for the player. If you're too much of a coward to fight, then end the suffering. Hellblade for the most part is interactive storytelling. Senua travels through Helheim, which is, as you would expect, dark and desolate. But the design is beautiful. Occasional breaks from the darkness let you drink in the game's visuals. Sound plays a huge part in portraying Senua's psychosis. I hear her thoughts. It's not too late to get into the boat and go back. No one will judge her. No one will ever know. 
Oh, she heard us. She constantly hears voices in the back of her mind that torment her, questioning her decisions and doubting her conviction. But they also serve to help at times, providing clues to puzzles or warnings when an enemy is about to attack. With a helping or hindering Senua, the voices are a constant. They are part of who she is. Voice actors used binaural microphones to record the 3D spatial position of the sound, recreating faraway screams and close-up whispers as voices in your head. This is combined with excellent voice talents. Druth, who explains Norse lore and the events surrounding Hellblade's plot, is a particular standout. She says that it is not seemly for the dead in their grave minds to bear valuable weapons. Her father answers with words of warning. You go to your doom. Baleful runes surround you. You have gone mad. You have lost your mind. Your thoughts are confused. It is dangerous to wake the dead. An interactive story must rely on its plot and characters, and Hellblade delivers on both those fronts. But when much of the game is simply moving from place to place, there are still moments of downtime where I lost focus. Breaking this up are the two core gameplay elements, combat and puzzle solving. Combat is simple but very satisfying. It's based around rather standard action RPG controls, a light and heavy attack, stun, evade and block. Parrying opens up counter-attacks and I slowly learnt combinations of light and heavy attacks as the game went on. A single enemy won't be much to take down, but groups of enemies can be a challenge. There are still times when a queue of enemies will stand there solemnly waiting their turn to die at your sword, but you can easily become surrounded with attacks coming at you from all angles, so you constantly need to keep enemies closely within your line of sight. Unfortunately, I didn't find the puzzle solving anywhere near as satisfying. It's fundamentally a case of finding a symbol within the environment. It took me some time to get used to, as there's not any initial indication on what you're supposed to do. But to be honest, once you've figured out how it works, it doesn't go much further. The routes you take to find the right symbols change, but it's still the same process, and you have to do it a lot. It gets old quickly, and when it's such a short game at around 8 hours long, I wish they could have added a bit more variety. There are two sections that mix things up, and both are fantastic. One uses binaural sound to direct you through a level in pitch black, but you soon return to matching the symbols, and rather than appreciating that variety, I was left wishing there was more. Ninja Theory have explained the thinking behind the gameplay. They spoke with real-life sufferers of psychosis to understand their experiences and accurately represent them in the game. Most people wouldn't link. Most of the things that we might think would be coincidence or you know, not worth commenting on, nevertheless that might have a particular salience or importance for them. It wasn't so much the execution that bothered me, but the repetition. Even some basic platforming could have shook things up in terms of reaching the right symbols, but you can't even jump. You move across beams and ledges, but this is a case of simply pushing the analog stick in the desired direction. I know that in a game like this, the story takes priority over the gameplay, and that Hellblade could never match the scale of a fully fledged AAA title without being one. But I'll be honest, I looked up how to solve a lot of the puzzles to save myself time, which I then felt guilty about when I realised the decision behind the gameplay, but anyway. Where Hellblade captured my attention and interest the most were these moments where Senua looks directly at me. It happens often and it's quite disturbing in truth. It disassociated me, the player, from Senua, the character. Usually that would sound like a bad thing, but I think in Hellblade that's the point. Psychosis has two main symptoms. Hallucinations and delusions. Hallucinations are expressed quite plainly through the voices in Senua's head and subtle visual changes to the environment. Okay, final spoiler alert because I'm just going to reveal everything here. 
Delusions, I think, come from the story itself. Senua's journey to Helheim, bargaining with Hela to release Dillian's soul, freeing herself from the darkness within. None of this is real. There's no doubt about it. The source of the darkness is in Helheim. And the goddess Hela holds his soul there. The Norse mythos is the backdrop to Senua's psychosis. Beginning when she runs from her mother's death and her father's abuse and finds truth in the wilds. Peaking when she returns to find the sacrificed corpse of Dillian. Through hallucinations and delusions, a sufferer of psychosis creates and immerses themselves in their own reality. One that doesn't act the same as mine or yours. And in those moments where the camera slowly pans around and Senua's gaze meets mine, her reality meets mine too. Is this what hell is? A world shaped by Senua's nightmares? Maybe that's why people feared seeing the world through her eyes. Because if you believe that Senua's reality is twisted, you must accept that yours might be too. I found it similar to a Shakespearean soliloquy. A moment when the lead character directly speaks to the audience. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, but the, the dread of something after death? Everything else around them freezes in time, allowing them to express their feelings or their intention to give the audience information the other characters can't know of. I felt that too in Hellblade, like Senua was showing me emotions only the player could pick up on. Sometimes it was resentment. Maybe she perceived me as another voice inside her head, telling her what to do. Sometimes it was sadness, like a cry for help to anyone that would listen. Every time I felt empathy that I hadn't really felt towards a character before. It was like Senua acknowledged she was a character in a video game, but she was trying to tell a much broader story. To send a deeper message. Why go on? When you give everything and face that which torments you. Only to find that it is worse than you could have imagined. Why go on? Is it really so weak to ask this? Or are we just so afraid of the honest answer that we do not dare pose the question? I think that it's incredibly impressive and exciting that a video game has portrayed and even dramatized a sensitive topic like psychosis. Anyway, I know I'm two years late on sharing these thoughts and I'm sorry that my review turned into a bit of a think piece at the end there, but Hellblade is definitely worth your time if you haven't played it yet.